This is James Taylor, and you're listening to The Creative Life. The Creative Life podcast is a show created for you, the creative. If you're looking for inspiration, motivation, and advice while at home, at work, or on your daily commute, then this show is for you. Each episode brings you a successful creative, whether that's a musician, writer, artist, designer, performer, educator, or creative entrepreneur. They share their journey, their successes, their failures, their creative process, their insights, and much, much more. In this episode, I speak with Australian jazz singer Emma Pask, and she shares with us her experiences on doing the TV show The Voice. And she also tells us how she manages to take care of her voice while on tour. Finally, she gives us a little bit of an insight of the differences and the pros and cons between having a record label and working on your music career independently. Enjoy this episode. Hey, it's James Taylor, and I'm really excited to bring you our featured guest today. Her name is Emma Pask, and Emma Pask is a leading voice on the Australian jazz scene. She uh, performed at the Bridal Waltz for Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban's wedding, and you'll frequently hear her if you're ever in Australia singing on uh, TV commercials uh, and ads. You you can hear all the time. uh, Her voice is everywhere. Um, Internationally, she has performed in China with the Shanghai uh, Symphony Orchestra, in London with the BBC Concert Orchestra and the BBC Big Band, and was in series. Uh, two of the Voice Australia and the judges for that included uh, Ricky Martin and Seal. She's a very, very talented lady. And Emma, it's great to have you on the show. Well, hi, James. That sounds like a huge rap. I, I love it. Thanks. <laughs> so <laughs> you, make, you make me sound really, really cool. But you deserve it. So share with our listeners, I mean, what's going on in your world just now? Well, well, I've got a heap going on in my world, actually. Um, it's a pretty exciting time. I have recently become um, an independent artist again. I've been through the record company um, game and um, done all that. I've been an independent artist, then signed with record labels, and now I'm back to being independent. I'm just about to release um, a brand new album in a couple of weeks, so I'm really excited. So that must have been a big change. I know a, a number of artists now who have kind of mm-hmm. gone through that process. They've gone through the, the major label. They've done the whole thing, and then they've yep. come come back to being independent. So how what how was that experience? How, how are you feeling now about yeah, ha- sure. having your having your life back in that way? <laughs> it, it it is exactly that is a really good statement. It is like having your life back. I feel really fantastically independent by being you know an independent artist I think it's a really fantastic thing I think it's a great experience if you you know if you do get the chance to go through both worlds is is that you get to go through both of the experiences then you can sit back and really look and, and evaluate which one you you know enjoy the experience more with there's there's pros and cons to both of course um, you know being an independent artist is a really difficult thing in the means of you know monetary wise and financially you've got to support yourself and so you know, lots of people are heading into those, you know, fantastic pledge and Kickstarter campaigns and things like that. Or like what I've done, for instance, is I've just made myself work really hard. <laughs> I've put my head down, bum up, and I've tried to get as many gigs as I can and, and you know, put my put my place, you know, my face out there and, and doing things that I wouldn't normally do musically, you know, ch- challenging myself and, and working a lot to raise a lot of money and um, you know, or enough money to, to fund the project myself. And I guess, you know, the relaxing thing with the record Record company I found was, you know, financially you're not you're not too concerned about too much other than you know making sure who's spending what on what and, and you're not going over budget, but you you're essentially you know sort of given a budget to work with and um and you can go off you know for me it happened I could go off creatively and still create quite independently um and things were covered financially but then um, I guess the downfall and the downside for the record company was for me was that I am such a keen and eager musician and I just always love to be working and, and love to be singing and love to be creating and doing things. And with them they see it, you know, as a obviously a business and they really want to structure you as an artist and so they're not necessarily wanting to move forward as fast as you are. And so, you know, when it came time to record my next album I was like, Hey guys, you know, I've got the arrangements ready and I've written some songs and I've got the band and booked the studio, I'm ready to go and and the record company would, you know, could suddenly turn around and sort of go, oh, well, yeah, this is great, but we're just not sure if we're getting the budget around blah, blah, this time. We might just, you know, put it off for a few weeks or blah, blah, blah. And, um, and then you'd check in in another month's time and you'd be ready to go and you kind of keep getting that, that feeling of being shelved, you know, yeah. like putting you on that shelf and then, you know, just pulling you out when they need you. So it was, for me, it was a really amicable thing between me and the record company, whereas I was saying, look, you know how keen I am, you know how much this, you know, how important it is for an artist too is to, you know, have a CD that comes out regularly and then you've, you're moving forward creatively and, and you've got um, 
a project to take to gigs and a reason to do touring, you know, all those sorts of things. So it was um, amicable between us. They said, look, you're, you're right, you're okay on your own, you go ahead and do it. And, um, yeah, and I said, thanks for everything, see you later. And if they can help on the way, they, they would and do. So it's, it's been good for me. And I suppose I mean, one of the things that you have going for you in, in this, with, with this change is that you, as a, as a jazz singer, as well as a jazz artist, you yeah. have the ability to go and tour. Um, yes. which maybe a lot of other artists that have come from the maybe the record the major label system um it's maybe a little bit more difficult than more you know studio orientated and, and, and so yep. to be able to go and take that show live is is a little bit more of an ask as you know you've got it's a bigger setup for, for you i mean I, yeah. I imagine you know a lot of times you're touring you can you can go out with something as simple as you know a piano trio um to exactly. go and do show and you and i know you would just you've been in switzerland doing festivals there and and so yeah. it, you're a little bit more mobile i suppose exactly mobile and adaptable that yeah. you can you can make things large scale if the budget is there and if it's able and if you need to strip things back then you can yeah most certainly work you know and do a capable tour with with a really limited amount of musicians yeah for sure so talk to us what does the first hour of your day look like well the first hour of my day today say for instance if you're just talking about today i wake up i woke up you know probably eight o'clock this morning and get up have a protein shake and i actually go and, and lift some weights which which sounds quite Great. manly and bulky but no i do I, I lift weights um two days a week and I do two cardio sessions a week but all in the morning and I also swim I'm a big big keen swimmer in here in Sydney I live in Bondi right near Bondi Beach Beautiful. I don't know if you, if you know Beautiful, that yes Bondi. yeah yeah um, have you been to Bondi have you been I there? have actually and, and fine enough we were just talking with our previous guest with uh, Jackie, oh, yeah. Jackie Lau who's a, um, a guitarist from Hong Kong and okay. he's just exactly the same thing that's that's what he does first thing every morning is he goes he goes swim. for a swim and, and Mike Stern and you know guitarist I know a lot of oh, musicians wow. that do exactly the same thing yeah I think I, I love swimming I've had I've been a swimmer since I was young and and living and growing up you know in the beaches in Sydney you just that, that we're just so spoiled it's such an incredible incredible coastline we've got and really lovely clean water and so Bondi Beach is spectacular and it's like a a 2k swim across Bondi Bay and back mm -hmm. um dodging the sharks if you can <laughs> um which I did the other day I got pulled out on the jet ski which was quite fun really um, yeah, exciting, and, but yeah, exciting and terrifying all at the same time. <laughs> so, so, from, a... so you, you've gone from record label sharks to uh, real <laughs> sharks, then. That's right. I'm I'm in the world of all kinds of sharks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think swimming and exercise for me. I lo I love to start my day by 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 doing some kind of exercise, whether it be lifting weights or doing a cardio session or swimming for sure. And how do you find out that you mentioned a protein shake? And I know uh, a mutual friend that we have together, Tommy Emmanuel. Um, oh, yeah. You know, who's actually, I think he's on tour just now in Australia. I think he was doing Sydney Opera House the other night. The other week, that's the, right, yeah. Yeah, and he, um, I, I know that he's got really into shakes now. And okay. uh, and he they take one of these uh, Nutribullets with them on the oh, road. Yeah. And so every morning, that's 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 the, that's the thing. That's <laughs> the, So how do you manage to, to kind of do that on the road? Because, you know, you have a this other yeah. thing, as well as being a musician, because you're a singer, which has its own issues especially around travel uh different um climates uh yeah. you know keep it keeping your, your, your voice in shape as well so do you you're yeah. do you can it do anything slightly different when you're on the road well i think I mean, I know it's slightly different I, I love that tommy uses a neutral bullet that's hilarious because i do too <laughs> every morning um i don't take my neutral bullet on the road but i think um if i can't take the neutral bullet i take a shaker where you can shake protein for me i'm a i'm a vegetarian as well so mm. i really need to i feel like i need to you know have a good couple of protein shakes a day to to make sure i'm getting a good source of protein into me um but you know when it comes to yes yeah, singing and preparation and traveling it really is it's one of those things, you know, obviously, you know, Alison, your gorgeous wife is a singer as well. And so you would get lots of tips from her, I'm sure, as to how she copes and, and manages and things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things I really do strongly believe in. It's a lot to do mentally as well as physically. Yeah. It's how you approach things, you know, vocally. I try really hard not to get caught up in, you know, stereotypical things that you can and can't do as a singer I think you've got to really just naturally feel what your body and what your system and how your throat and how you you know physically you react to certain things and just go with the flow and be relaxed not not you know as stress-free as possible is the best thing yeah um yeah I have a, a really fantastic I'm actually I think a lot of listeners might be interested too in um um, this guy that I've discovered, he's a friend now and also, you know, a therapist. His name's Jim Bostock and he's from Queensland in Australia. And he originally um, studied, hopefully I'm getting this right, as a physiotherapist. 
Um, but he's now pretty much, and I really should put this out for your in your podcast, your link to his site if anyone's interested in checking it out. He's um, he's kind of discovered this technique, completely non-invasive, and it's not anything to do with the, those heavy um, vocal massage things that that physios and, and people can really get into, you know, quite invasively physically. Very non-invasive um, therapy for releasing all the tension and, and muscles all around your vocal folds and in your neck and shoulders and head and. Um, it's an incredible procedure that I, honestly, James, too, I'm the biggest skeptic when it comes to like that. People are like, you know, he'll do this, he'll do that, and you'll be magic. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm, you know, I don't want any, anything to do with that. But I gave it a go. He offered me this free treatment a few years ago. And I was like, yeah, all right, come on, I bet you will, you know. Yeah. And, um, and I honestly, it was a two-hour treatment, and it was all to do with liver alignment and all these different things. And I was so, yeah, so skeptical. When he had finished, I sat up and even just through during the process of him, you know, working around my neck, it was like an incredible experience that I can't explain to you the freedom that I felt like muscularly around my voice and just, um, you know, vocally, if you start off before the session and you do some siren exercises and some scales or anything like that, just to have a sound and a feel, a feel of what your voice is like and then you'd have this treatment with Jim and the, the feeling, the difference, you can hear it for one, you can feel it. It's just incredible. And it usually locks in and lasts for about, you know, a good few months. So for me, I, I see Jim maybe twice a year and have my, my tune up. So that helps me awesome. on the road. And we'll definitely, yeah, put, we'll, we'll definitely put his, uh, his link on the show exactly. notes here as well. So people, yeah. if you're a singer, you're listening just now, you can go and kind of check out that and, and see how that works. Yeah, for uh, sure. You're yeah, really good. yeah. I mean, that's the thing I, I always think about singing, you know, unlike uh, other kind of musicians, um, mm-hmm. you, you're, your voice is your instrument. Your body is your instrument, and it's, yeah, it's and it's physical. and it, there's a much more physical there's a physicality that you don't necessarily get with other players. Um, I would say so. What what would you, would you yeah. say is your your biggest weakness as a as a music artist uh, or or creative person? Well, my biggest weakness, yeah, I do get I I can get lazy and distracted quite easily. I um I'm a sucker for a good movie. I'm a sucker <laughs> for sitting on the couch and watching a TV series, so I can get distracted from music. <laughs> Um, you know, for a little bit, I, I guess, yeah, my biggest, yeah, I guess that would be one of them. I, 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 I do eventually get around to things and I'm really dedicated and I know I'm driven, but I can, I can be a little tad bit lazy sometimes. So that's my, my little downfall, I think. And then what about on the, the flip side? What would you say is your, your biggest strength? My biggest strength, like musically or? Just musically or as a person in terms of, you know, how you, you know, your, strength. yeah, the thing that's maybe helped you in, in your career as well. Yeah. I reckon, well, I mean, without, you know, wanting to blow my own trump or anything, and this is only I think people might think very differently, but I, I tend to think I'm generally pretty easygoing and I'm quite um, approachable and I'm quite acceptable and, uh, you know, when I'm meeting people and I, I'm really interested and I love, I love people and stories and ideas and communicating. So, um, yeah, I think maybe, you know, being quite easily easy to get along with is, is definitely a pro in the in the industry. You know, you don't... We all know people that we come across that you're kind of like, oh, it's really difficult to work with or, you know, you have some ups and downs. I think I'm pretty generally, you know, straight ahead. You have to ask some people who yeah. are around me, of course. Yeah. And, I mean, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean uh, is that, you know, is part of that that you're at your Australian-ness as well? I mean, Australians, do you do have a reputation as being very easygoing, very, you know, nice to – and all, all the Australian musicians I've worked with have all been great. You know, I've never, I, oh, they've all, all been very easygoing and, and good, good fun to, to, uh, to work with. So is, is, yeah. is, is that part of your Australian nature coming out there as well? Well, I'd like I'd like to hope I'd like to think so. Yeah, I think your dad says the same thing. He's quite lovely. He likes his Aussie musicians too. Um, I I would say so. Yeah. Although I have to say my parents are Brits, so I'm technically half a pom. Ah, okay. As my as my family over in the UK remind me, I was born and bred here. I'm yep. definitely an Aussie, but I've got um I've got that lovely Brit side to me too, which I think is you is got that heritage. You guys, you could, yeah, you guys are warm and lovely, and my parents, you know, I I love their our British history. I think they're they're lovely, but I think yeah, maybe the the laid back, yeah. the laid back Aussie thing goes for me in both contexts, as like saying laid back because I can be a bit too laid back and a bit lazy, and then laid back because I can be you know easy to get along with and yeah, and work work is is quite relaxed and fun. So yeah, it works in an upside and a downside right. and is, is, there, is there a habit you wish you had that you don't, maybe don't feel necessarily you have just now oh goodness a habit that I wish I had yes I wish I would eat more healthy for sure <laughs> as in I wish I had that habit of where I okay I wish I had a habit where I didn't crave chocolate every day 
<laughs> well, they, they do say that there, there, are, there are some good things about chocolate, I'm told. Uh, it's kind yeah, of, it's kind of healthy, but probably just not, not in, uh, in large quantities. Exactly right, which is my downfall. Yeah, <laughs> but as, as as a vegetarian, and I, I, I obviously with uh, my wife, my wife Alison, who's a vegetarian and a singer as well. Oh, she um, is. Yeah, oh, cool. and so that's that's an often thing on the road is very difficult, and different countries is uh, You know, usually when in America, when she tours in America, it's great. And most problem, most states aren't a problem, um, but oh. other parts of the world it can a little be a bit more troublesome. So, is that something you're found in when when you're when you're on the road, being able to kind of stay healthy food wise? at the same time and not just eating cheese sandwiches every day yes a hundred percent and for me too I've got an extra added sort of concern and health issue that I do have to look out for a little like I kind of um I kind of suffer and it's only really sort of happened in the last few years maybe five years um I'm kind of well yeah I have this thing called sudden hearing loss which is really awful when Mm. it comes to obviously being music is our you know life um sudden hearing loss and it's and it's very much highly related with many airs disease I'm not sure if you've come across many airs before which is like vertigo and yeah it's like vertigo and hearing loss and and it's quite awful and I've had about five big episodes of it in the last five years and for me I have to really watch my sodium intake um so when you are traveling exactly that like recently I was in Brazil and South America and my husband is um is Uruguayan um from South America originally so we were back seeing the family and I was touring and doing some things in Brazil and and a lot of you know there's a lot of bad food a lot of fried food a lot of breads a lot of cheeses and yeah. a lot of alcohol <laughs> consumed yeah. um all those things that you've got to avoid when you're trying to keep your sodium low so yeah it's really difficult um and it is yeah you've got to I, got to consciously always be conscious of, of trying to think you know is this the right thing but yeah i have definitely ups and downs with that too <laughs> and it, it, what, what are you working on just now that's that you really excited that it can excite you most well i think i mentioned at the start when we were talking i'm pretty sure yeah my my new album i've um literally just finished it and i've sent it off to the printers the other day maybe yesterday i think mm-hmm. i sent it off to the printers and so um that's the project that i've been working on ever since i left the record company and, and went out on my own um and i'm really really proud of it i'm really excited because for me it's a little bit of a a venture away from you know what most people here in Australia and and you know the few people overseas who do see me is I've kind of ventured a little bit down the path uh, away from you know a swinging jazz album classics kind of standards album and um I've gone in the, a full latin direction so ah, I've covered yeah I've really um and that and hence you know obviously that's the the influence from my my husband and also working with Ricky Martin on on the voice that you mentioned before yeah um yeah, it's something that my heart really kind of cried out for, and I, I mean, I've always loved Latin music, and, I, and I'm really intrigued by the the Latin jazz crossover and the jazz fusion, you know, element. Obviously, my albums, um, yeah, so it's Latin, so I'm, you know, I'm doing some Portuguese numbers, I'm doing some Spanish things, I'm doing some Cuban things, and and um, and even a Beatles track that we've, we've rearranged in a, a beautiful slow bossa. And um, for me, yeah, it's really exciting that. Um, you know, that finding that balance of, you know, obviously it's not going to be an authentic Latin album because we're, you know, white Australian musicians <laughs> hanging out and, and playing this, this music. But, uh, you know, we, I surrounded myself with, um, with great friends and great musicians. And one of those was um, Sandro Bueno, who's a brilliant percussion, a Brazilian percussionist. And I loved being with him in the studio because we, you know, me and the trio who um, we were talking about before, my piano, bass and drummer, you know, we were in the studio with Sandro on, on percussion and we'd be approaching these songs and approaching these style, you know, these things stylistically and um, talking about Brazilian rhythms and and then combining our approach to it and how we like to play and what's comfortable for us, you know, what sort of groove is comfortable for us. And then Sandro saying, well, guys, if you're going to play it this way, you know, you, you need to really approach it from this way and, mm. you know, for it to be a crossover to that authentic Brazilian, you know, rhythm. So, yeah, it was really exciting, um, such a fun project to work on. And I'm just so relieved that it's all done and I'm, you know, it's all finished. I'm really proud of it and we've got fantastic horns on there and, um, and some strings and yeah it's a real big mixed bunch of, of things of awesome all things like that. I mean I suppose I mean you, going back you, you've got all the kind of the Stan gets is um, you know going back to the yeah. con- there, there is a strong uh, connection between the you know, the jazz thing and the and the Latin thing and, and I can't remember was it was it Sheila um, 
uh, was it Vaughn uh, that did the? Uh, it wasn't Fitz, Ella Fitzgerald. It was oh, Sarah Vaughan. Was it Sarah Vaughan that I think uh, did the Peggy, Latin? Latin. There was Peggy one. Lee, Peggy Lee did a Latin Ella Lee album, which was great. Okay. But yeah, there's bound to be yeah many more. And then more recently, I don't know if you know that that Kirsty McCall had the album out when she was just before she passed away a couple of years ago, which was her doing the kind of whole Cuban thing. And, and so even though oh, she's wow. she's not a jazz she's not a jazz singer, but it just had a there was a sassiness about it in the way that she yeah. kind of blended blended what she was doing. So that's great. So and as an, an album name being decided yet, or is that still top secret? Yeah, no, no, definitely not top secret. I'm, I'm putting it out there as much as I can. I'm gonna have it released in iTunes in a couple of weeks. So I'm really, yeah, really happy to get out there. It is called um, Cosita Divina, oh. which is, um, yeah, in Spanish. It's um, my husband we speak Spanish. It's, um, it's kind of like you know, and I guess the English translation is, you know, the direct translation is divine thing. But it, they use Cosita Divina in a way of. You know, when you see a cute little kid and like you want to grab its little cheeks and you go, oh, well, that's so cute. Oh, you cute little thing. So it's like, you know, the Spanish and the, my family, my Uruguayan family sort of going, oh, cosita divina, you cute little thing. <laughs> and uh, my husband always says it to me, you know, over the years, he's just always said it to me. And, and I end up as a result saying it back to him and then up back to other people. And it's, it's a... It's a multi-gender thing. You can say it to females, you can say it to males, it's a, an all over thing. So I wrote a little song called Cosita Divina about my husband, and so that's what I chose to call the album. Fantastic. That's great. So we're definitely going to check that out when it uh, it comes onto the market. I'll put that the notes in the, in the show notes as well. So um, oh, talk to us about a time when you um, worked on a project and you, you tried you know full on to really make it happen and but for whatever reason it didn't work out and um, more importantly what was the lessons that you you learned from that experience yeah wow okay that's a really interesting question that one projects that i've worked on that it hasn't really worked out you know i guess if i can put it to something that's that's really recent um that's happened to me um and this is me just completely thinking off the top of my head um you know, and to be honest, who knows what's going to happen with it? It's one of those things you're talking about being on The Voice. Um, mm. You know, I've just completed The Voice Australia about, it was actually two years ago now. Gosh, time flies when you're having fun. Um, and one of the highlights for me on that show was um, my coach, who was Ricky Martin. After I, I sang, um, he, he sort of, he's the one who really encouraged me to sing um, Mashkinada, which I'd never sung before. I, we all know Mashkinada and, you know, the George Ben tune and, and yeah, yeah. heavily. Yeah, like Sergio Mendes making it a hit for George Ben and and I'd never attempted the Portuguese lyrics and so I I really took that challenge on and I did it and I went I uh, went on the show and, and we performed it and it was really great and I finished and it was quite a high and and then on on stage I think Ricky was really excited in the moment too you know and Ricky sort of said to the audience and professed to everyone on live and international TV that wow Emma you know I'm going to drop a bomb here I'm I'm going to record a Brazilian album and I want you to be part of it. Wow, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And my, you know, my mouth. Like, if you watch the video back, my mouth just hit the hit the floor. You know, I was like, "What? You want to record with me? What are you talking about?" And um, it was such an amazing feeling for me, and it was a huge honor. And I was so flattered that you know someone of his stature and of his fame, and you know of what he does musically, he can work with anyone he wants in the world. But he's like, "Wow, I, I want to work with you." And so for me, I, it knocked me for six. I was so excited. And um, anyway, you know, the show finished and I, I got booted out halfway through. And and uh, and then we kept in touch and I kept sort of, you know, chasing up and, and following it as much as I could, saying, hey, you know, I'm ready, I'm here. If you want to do that Zoom recording, remember me. And um, and it went on for maybe a year and then I caught up with the team again when they were back the next year for doing the season three. And and um, all being really lovely and, you know, nice and and the relationship was all good, but they kind of pretty much told me that the record company, which was Sony, I think is for Ricky, was saying, well, they're not going ahead with that Brazilian project. And we all know about record companies, especially me, knowing mm -hmm. as well that, you know, it's it's really, it is up to them what, what happens and what doesn't. So I kind of got it. I got where they were coming from. And that was really devastating for me. I was like, wow, well, does that mean that that doesn't happen now, that that's, that's not going to happen? And I sort of really worked so hard, you know, at thinking of, of doing the right thing in the, in the year and the year and a half leading up to sort of now, you know, following up and letting people know, that, you know, that I was there and ready to do it. And then when it wasn't going to happen, I was like, wow, well, 
I've got to change my mindset around now because that that, that may not happen. And the, the team there are being really lovely and they're saying, you know, look, it's not – obviously this is not going to happen but there could be a project down the – down the road you never know and so for me musically I got so excited about a certain project that now there's not happening necessarily so I think you know what I really did do with this project that I've started now this this product that I've got the album that I'm about to put out is me kind of going well all right instead of sitting back and sitting in the corner and crying and going oh I can't believe you know I'm not going to record a Ricky Martin that's so devastating well if they're not going to do it for me I'm going to jolly well go and create it myself because I really want to do you know, not necessarily a Brazilian now, but I love this music so much. It doesn't mean that it has to end here for me. I'm going to go and create it myself. So I guess in that respect, you can say that what I did was I turned it around and now I've got this really amazing product that I'm so proud of and I can't wait to get it out there. And it's happened for me, you know, regardless of whether he's involved or not, I've, 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 surged forward and done it myself and I feel really proud that I've done it myself too so and you've got like you've got that level of creative control now as well I would imagine you know you, you yeah. can decide in terms of you know the material the the order the artwork the musicians you, you've, got, you've got 100% of control on that I mean it's a hard yeah. it's a hard you know I've, I've heard that story too many times um yeah. you know of especially with labels and you know i've uh, fortunately i've done a lot of st- stuff with um folks at sony as well so i'm not, not meaning to to knock any particular um record company no, and it, either, and in fact i heard it most most recently with um not in music with uh, alec baldwin the, the actor who okay. has a great radio uh, show called here's the thing we he brings on lots of guests it's, it's fantastic you can get you can hear it as a podcast online and cool. and, and the podcast was doing really really well uh, because you know he's he's a great he's great interviewing people he gets great guests on and they really kind of go deep on on these the stuff that they're talking about and then yeah. he got offered the contract to take that same thing and put it on tv onto msnbc i think mm-hmm. and they took it to msnbc and as soon as he got to msnbc with it they said okay now um you know he said i, I want to have this great this woman who's the, one of the top t- choreographers in new york on, on broadway shows i said well oh. you know she's not really famous enough for the tv and so <laughs> so, so all, all the things that made the show great yeah they're highlighting Change. these people who are the best in the world at whatever they do they may not necessarily yeah. be famous as in you would recognize them if you're walking down whole foods or something but but they, yeah. they, they, they're great and the show just didn't do well and then funny enough he's just you know he got out of the contract then he just brought it back onto onto radio back onto the podcast again and it's oh, fantastic dude. fantastic he's got control over it and he i heard him i think he spoke about an, in, an interview about it and he just said you know, there's that thing that when they sign you for something is because they want you for a certain type of thing that you're known for, you know, you've been able to, this product you've been able to create. Yeah. And as soon as they do that, they want to start mucking about with it <laughs> and destroying the very thing that made it good in the first place. Yeah, take the essence away from it. It's really a shame, isn't it? It's a shame. Oh. Well, that's so, the, I mean, Alec Baldwin, I'm going to go check out that Well, that's a great lesson well. that you've, you've learned, you learned anyway, just to, to, in terms of that, that level of control. So talk to us about, yeah. you know, was there an aha moment or a light bulb moment in your, your life and this journey that you've gone through uh, in making mm-hmm. it in music? Well, I think um, that relates to how I, I kind of approach this thing that's happened to me in the last couple of years is probably, you know, the, the groundwork on that attitude that was able to get me through that was probably from years ago, um, you know, the early in, in my career, I, I sort of, you know, for a little brief history on, on me when I was, I'm in my late 30s now and when I was 16, it was when I was, um, you know, for want of a better word, discovered by one of the great Australian um jazz musicians here, James Morrison. He's yeah. an incredible multi-instrumentalist who your, your dad's worked with and, and knows well. And, um, you know, he's an incredible musician. And he discovered me, you know, when I was 16. And so I began, I was at high school singing with my school band and he heard me sing. And, and pretty much the week after that night, he heard me. I was on the road with his band touring the world and Australia, you know, and it's been 20 years of, of that. Um, and so I guess, yeah, for me, it was, you know, a good sort of 15 years into that that um, relationship and that, you know, musical collaboration was the aha moment for me, I think, was is watching, you know, and being, you're essentially, you know, like a sideman in that job, which is a bloody great thing to have. It's fantastic to be a sideman in James Morrison's band. It's so incredible. Um, but for me, it was like watching him, you know, as a mentor and seeing how he's carved his career and how he just keeps recreating himself and keeps, you know, having all these amazing projects turn up, I, I just thought to myself I was cruising along with him and it was really easy for me and I loved what I did so much but it was me heavily relying on his schedule and what he was doing as to where I would be and what I was doing. And I think, you know, it wasn't 
until too many years ago, not you know, not too long ago, that I realized I've got to find an even keel of this. I've got to, you know, I've got to look out for myself and I've really got to, you know, be independent in that respect as well. As in, you know, it's been a great 20 year career working alongside James, but, you know, if I want another 20 year career in this industry, I've really got to not rely on anyone else to make that happen for me. It has to be me driving the, the boat, so to speak, as opposed to someone else driving and me being a passenger. So I think, yeah, my aha moment was like, oh, wow, actually, if, if you want to keep this truck moving forward, you've got to do it yourself. Um, I suppose that it's that thing about building your own platform, not not always just being yeah. on other people's platform. And it, they say this, especially in online internet and things where you kind of do, after a while, you do have to start really building your own platform. It's fine for a, a period of time. You know, whether yep. it's if I'm a writer, for example, guest writing on a, on a blog, that, that's mm-hmm. great because it brings you in a certain audience. But then there comes a point where you've really kind of got to build your own thing and the people yeah, that are in it, I- in it for you, not necessarily because you're there performing with, 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 uh, with someone else. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that's so right, and it's such a like you said. It doesn't necessarily have to have, have, to, have to happen straight away. I think the beautiful part of it is being nurtured along the way, and and just you know having that environment where you can suss things out and you can look around and see how things are working. And you know, as a young young girl, I I, I it was I was only sixteen and seventeen, and sort of being thrust into this world of going, oh right, this is how that works, and. <laughs> You know, I, I didn't even know you could be a singer for a living. I had no idea you could do that. And I was, certainly wasn't aiming to do that when I was 16. It was more like being presented this opportunity. And I think having those years to be in that position where you're checking it all out and taking all things in is really, you know, so instrumental in, in, in being able to be able to take it and move forward yourself after that. So, so having, having worked with all these, some of these great musicians and having that kind of mentorship that, that's, mm. that's occurred as well, what's the best advice that you've ever received? Wow, lots of advice, loads of advice over the years. Um, I think one that really rings, you know, true is is always being told to just be yourself, you know, and don't don't try and be anyone else. Um, you know, be yourself. I think another one was, you know, a great thing that I like to stick to that's always ringing around is is um, concentrate and and follow your own journey. Don't compare yours with anyone else's. Mm. Um, you know, it that stuff is rife rife with disappointment and rife with upset I mean it it really is it's so lovely to be um you know grab inspiration from other people around you but really you know focus on your own journey and your own and your own self and your own path and don't compare yours to others just take inspiration from other things I think yeah I mean also our start points are also different as well so you know if if you're talking to uh, a 16 17 year old who lives in Louisiana in America mm-hmm. about how to have a career as a jazz singer is going to be so oh. different from you know the, the path that you went and the path that you know else or who, yeah. who, whoever else went as well it's um yeah we, 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 we all start from slightly different places yeah and all those things all those different places where you're starting from are fascinating and it's great to um discover how other how things you know happen for other people but everyone yeah everyone's unique and everyone has their own unique story and their own unique journey and yeah and it's exciting just yeah concentrate on on it and and the goodness that you can take out of it for you so uh, i i often see a lot of your stuff on facebook as well is there an online resource or a tool that that you that you love that you're that you're kind of spending spending time on just now (laughs) <laughs> I love well if you talk about social media I, I do love Facebook and I love Instagram I'm I'm a very big fan of posting pics great I love that um if you're talking about musically when you relate things I guess musically one handy little gadget that I love having on my iPad or my even just my iPhone when I'm traveling especially overseas you know this year I I was lucky enough to to tour um and play a sconer in Switzerland with my own trio so we didn't have to worry too much about charts because we've you know been playing together for so long but when you are you know thrust into situations with musicians that you haven't worked with before or not necessarily musicians of you know you're in different different stages in your career as in if you know you, you don't necessarily know all the jazz standards and all the keys and all those things um i love having the little i i real book or i think look, i think it's called i real book or i real pro they had to change the name yeah. or something like that uh, yeah i know another, another one is, is a it's a it's a favorite by a lot of uh, guests we've had oh, jazz, yeah? jazz artists that they they don't leave home without it online yeah, not whether on their phones I, or the yeah just look to my iPhone now. It's iReal Pro. Yeah, it's I-Real where Pro. you can just pop a, a standard and you can put it in any key and then Bob's your uncle, you're away. You know, you can just say, let's play, you know, cheek to cheek and F, bang, there it is. You, you're done. Great. And we'll, and we'll add that onto the show notes as well. So, Emma, what if, uh, if you could only recommend one record or book to our listeners, what would it be? One record or one book, not both. I can do one or either. One you can or do one, one or the other. One or the other. Okay. 
cool. I would say um, an album, a record, which I am obsessed with, always have been and always will be. Uh, Karma McRae, my favourite singer of all time. Um, Karma McRae, the great American songbook that she did live. I think it was in the 70s. Um, and she's got Joe Pass with her and um, it's such an incredible recording. It's just my one biggest regret, or I mean, it's not a regret because I didn't have the chance. One of my most things I'm upset about is I never got to see her or, you know, experience her live. And this album is like, for me, it's the next best thing. It's like turning it on, closing your eyes and picturing that you're in the club and just having her entertain you live. She just sounds like she would have been the most raucous, devilish <laughs> lady ever, you know, really sassy, really heaps of trouble, all those things. And I, I just love it. I think it's, it's, you know, when she sings Sunday, oh my gosh, I want to just like flip my lid when she goes into the second chorus and she starts blowing. It's just so cool. I love it. Well, that's great. Come Marie, the, the great American songbook, and we'll put that in the, the show uh-huh. notes as well. Now, imagine if tomorrow you woke up in beautiful Bondi yes. um, and you had to start from scratch. So all you have is your voice and, you know, and where you, with the condition that the vo- your voice is just now and the knowledge that you've acquired over these years in music. What would you do? Well, I would get up and have a swim, <laughs> have a protein shake, <laughs> um, do whatever I'm going to do in the day and then I'd get myself to a club. I would get myself to a jazz club. I would um, go to somewhere where they've got live music on and I would see if I can sit in with the band and I would start all over again. Absolutely. I'd just get straight back into it. If I had the knowledge that I already have now and my voice and I just had to start all over again, yeah, I would just go and hang out with my muso friends and I'd play and I'd start singing again straight away. Awesome. And I know they're, they're in, um, because you're, you're based in Sydney, they've got that great jazz club, uh, The Basement. The Basement, yeah. Yeah, which is, which is regular. Five, which is regular. Yeah, yeah, and the, and there's a place just very near there. It's called um, Harry's Cafe de Wheels. The last time I was in <laughs> Sydney, which is I think is a bit of an institution for for musicians. It is. You'll often meet it musicians is. there at like two a.m. after they, they've all finished their gigs, and it's uh, it, it's yeah, it's, it's probably not it's the height. Pie, uh, yeah, it's probably pie not with mushy peas. It, exactly pie with mushy yeah. peas. It's probably not the height of uh, Nouvelle cuisine, but it's very good. It's exactly what you want after after a, a long show and uh, and it Indeed. gives you a chance to kind of catch up with some folks as well Indeed. so and then now when you come back next time i'm going to take you to the other joint that's really really um quite happening now too it's called frankie's and it's frankie's. the late night pizza joint so you get that pizza hit after the gig which i know heaps of musos would love <laughs> see if and if any, any of our listeners are listening just now and you're on your way to uh to australia you've got a couple of great recommendations there for places to, to check out as well absolutely yeah for sure so share the best ways that listeners can connect with you and can learn more about you Oh, they connecting with me. Facebook is number one. I love Facebook and Twitter. Um, definitely come and, and search for me and, and hook up on those pages and Instagram. I'm, I mean, I'm really, I'm really into my socials. I love, I love connecting with people and meeting people. So, I say Facebook. And my website, you can check out emmapass.com. You know, you can drop me emails through there and. Um, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the usual suspects. Awesome. Well, Emma, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's great to speak to you. I look forward to catching up either next time you're in London or next time uh, I'm over in, uh, in in lovely Sydney. And yeah, I, wish you, I wish you all the Brilliant. best with the uh, with the new album when it comes out as Thanks well. Thanks so much, James. Thanks. It's great. You should yeah, bring yourself and Alison and, and your dad back and they need to play in <laughs> Sydney again. <laughs> great. All the best, Emma. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Hey, James Taylor here again. And if you're interested in living a more creative life, then I'd love to invite you to join me as I share some of the most successful strategies and techniques that high performing creatives use. I put them all together in a free downloadable ebook that you can get by going to jamestaylor.me. That's jamestaylor.me to get your free downloadable ebook on creativity.